Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review and with a lot of recent videos I have looked at less popular figures because sometimes you can find some hidden gems but this time I'm going to look at a figure that I think is pretty popular. I think most collectors like it. I'm talking about the 1986 G.I. Joe Night Spotter Low Light. I don't have a lot of setup for this figure so let's just jump right into it. HCC 788 presents Low Light. This is Low Light, G.I. Joe's Night Spotter from 1986. He was available in 1986 and 1987 and was discontinued for the year 1988. In 1989, there was a version 2 of Low Light on the Slaughter's Marauders subteam. The Slaughter's Marauders Low Light was just a remold of version 1, but with different colors. In 1991, there was a third version of Low Light introduced, and you might notice something a little different about this version. He has the same code name and file name as the first two versions, but he looks like an entirely different person. He has a beard, which is fine. Low Light could grow a beard in the intervening years, but he has black hair instead of blonde hair, straight hair instead of wavy hair, an entirely different head shape and facial features. It looks like this version 3 was intended to be a new character, but instead of coming up with new ideas for this character, they just called him Low Light, despite the fact that he looks nothing like Low Light. It's like they think they can totally change the way a character looks and and no one will notice. This title, Night Spotter, is a euphemism for sniper. Low Light comes with a big sniper rifle. Uh, his file card says he's a marksman. He's a sniper, that's what he is. A sniper is a marksman who works solo or in small units. He targets the enemy from long range or from concealment, and he often uses specialized weaponry like a sniper rifle. In addition to that, Low Light is equipped to do his job in the dark, and he has some specialized equipment for that purpose. Low Light may be the first G.I. Joe figure to be equipped equipped as a sniper, but G.I. Joe's real first sniper was probably Snowjob from 1983. Snowjob was the Arctic Trooper, but based on the skills noted on his file card, Snowjob was a sniper. But instead of giving him a sniper rifle, they gave him a laser rifle, which I think was a mistake and a missed opportunity. Let's take a look at Low Light's accessories. His accessories are all one color. They are all black, but in this case, that is appropriate. Let's take a look at Low Light's weapon, which the card contents call a 7.62 millimeter model 85 sniper rifle. The card contents do call this a sniper rifle and that is the only mention of sniper on the packaging. This accessory is probably based on the real world British sniper rifle, the Parker Hale M85. The rifle uses 7.62 millimeter NATO rounds and this one has a very large scope, probably a starlight scope, an AN PVS4 passive night vision scope. A starlight scope works by intensifying ambient light. It does not use infrared light. This one also has a suppressor which reduces noise and muzzle flash, but it is not a silencer. A rifle like this would still make a significant amount of noise with the suppressor. And most importantly, it has a bipod. That bipod can swing uh, and it can be removed and it is very tiny and this is the most frequently lost part. Low light has an Uzi submachine gun uh, and this does look quite a bit like the real world weapon, but it has a very short barrel and it has a loop on the rear sight and on the bolt. This same Uzi was also issued with the 1987 Law action figure, and I think this is the worst Uzi in the G.I. Joe line. Uh, the detail just isn't there. It feels kind of flat and thin and almost two-dimensional. And why does Low Light need this Uzi? He has a really awesome sniper rifle. Uh, I just don't think he needs this accessory. The Uzis that came with almost any version of Snake Eyes were superior to this one, but Unfortunately, this is the one that got repeatedly reused. Finally, Low Light came with an enormous backpack, and this is not the largest G.I. Joe backpack by any stretch, but it is really big. It is pretty well detailed. It has a pouch here. It has a couple extra magazines, probably for his Uzi. It has a canteen. It has this nice mesh pattern, so really not a bad backpack. With the large backpack, the sniper rifle with the long barrel and the Uzi, Low Light is top heavy and can be hard to balance on a figure stand. Let's take a look at Low Light's articulation. He had the standard articulation for 1986 G.I. Joe action figures. That means he could turn his head from left to right. He could also look up and down. His neck was on a ball joint. Uh, he could move his arm up as a shoulder about so far and swivel as a shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow so he could move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep so he could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso a bit. 
He could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees, and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Low Light, starting with his head, and there is a lot going on with this head sculpt. On his head, he's wearing this black knit cap, which on a mission, he would probably pull down over his bright blonde hair. Uh, now, this cap is not removable. It's sculpted on, and I don't mind that so much. I do prefer helmets to be removable, but if a cap or a hat is sculpted on, that's fine. He does have that blonde wavy hair and he's wearing red goggles. These goggles are dark adapter goggles, also known as red adaptation goggles. Now as a kid I always assumed these were like infrared goggles, but they're not. These are used to preserve natural night vision. On his chest he has a gray jacket and this almost looks like a gray jumpsuit to me, but he's wearing a belt so I guess it is and that's a gray jacket and trousers. And he has a red pad on his right shoulder and he would rest the butt of his sniper rifle against that. He has a black strap, green grenades, and multiple silver buckles. That is excellent detail. There's even some nice detail on the back. The arms are also highly detailed. We have a couple pockets on the upper arms, and we have elbow pads, which would be very useful for crawling around on the ground, which low light would often have to do. We have detailed cuffs with silver buckles, more silver detail, really nicely done, and then we have black gloves. On the waist piece, we have the same color gray. We have a black belt, a silver belt buckle, a silver zipper. We have a couple pouches on the sides. We even have a lot of detail on the back. And if we zoom in really close, we have what looks like a key on a belt loop. I'm not sure what that's for, but there is just a ton of detail all over this figure. No part of this figure is plain. On his legs, that gray uniform continues, and on his right leg, we have a very detailed knife on a very detailed strap with a silver buckle. And on the inner leg, we also have another silver zipper. On the left leg we have more zippers uh, and we have a couple straps that hold on this very strange and unidentified device. There's been a lot of speculation about what this is. Uh, is it meant to store his rifle scope? Uh, is it a holster for an accessory that the figure didn't come with? Uh, I really don't know. And we finish up with some amazingly detailed boots with more silver zippers. I was looking at all these zippers on low lights pants and I was thinking, you know what they look like? They look like parachute pants. You remember parachute pants from the 80s, made of nylon, had way too many zippers? That's what it looks like Low Light is wearing. Why is Low Light wearing parachute pants? Mission to the mall! Let's take a look at Low Light's file card, and this time, fortunately, I have the full card back on which the figure was packaged, so we can really look at how this figure was marketed. Uh, we have the G.I. Joe logo up here, looks great, and we have this really gorgeous card art. Uh, one of the best things about G.I. Joe was the card art. This really captures the spirit of the character. On the flip side, we have the cross cell. We have little thumbnails of all the other G.I. Joe action figures that were available at the time, so you can go out and buy them all. We have one tiny little flag point, one flag point per figure. Uh, then we have Low Light's file card, which you were intended to clip and save for your G.I. Joe command files. This file card has this faction as G.I. Joe. It has a portrait of Low Light from the artwork on the front of the card. It has his code name as Low Light, and he is the Night Spotter. His file name is Cooper G. McBride. His primary military specialty is infantry. Secondary military specialty is marksmanship instructor. His birthplace is Crosby, North Dakota, and his grade is E6. This section says, as a child in North Dakota, Low Light was afraid of the dark, timid with animals, and shy of loud noises. Until one precarious hunting expedition with his father, Low Light somehow lost his way in the impenetrable darkness. He was found three weeks later with his flashlight, 22 rifle, and a grin from ear to ear. Ten years later, he was an instructor at the Army Marksmanship Program in Fort Benning and a self-taught expert on image intensification. This bottom section has a quote. It says, The Joes like to have low light along for the ride. They know that if something gets really hairy and that's bound to happen sooner or later, all they have to do is wait until dark. It doesn't matter what field of fire the bad guys control, the night belongs to low light. That's not what Patty Smith says. She's pretty sure the night belongs to lovers. This file card combines two common G.I. Joe file card cliches. One, he has a natural aversion 
aversion or disinclination to his specialty, like Tripwire being clumsy or Blowtorch being paranoid about fire, and two, acquiring his skills at an early age. These seem contradictory, but somehow Lolite's file card includes both. Lolite had some decent use in G.I. Joe media. In the cartoon series, they added the element that he kind of dislikes the dark, and that expands on the aversion to his specialty. In the Deke animated series, in his Slaughter's Marauders uniform, Lolite exposed the G.I. Joe teammate Scoop as a Cobra spy. In the G.I. Joe comic book, Lolite was used in the Special Missions series in issues number 8 and 11, and in issue 8, Lolite was a pivotal part of the mission. I really like that issue because it features a beautiful scene with geared up Joes ready to parachute into action. In that issue, Lolite makes the important decision not to shoot his target. Taking a look at Lolite overall, this is an excellent action figure, top tier all the way. It's highly detailed, he's not decked out in a lot of camouflage like you'd expect a sniper to be, but his colors are mostly appropriate for night attack, and that's part of what Lolite does. The figure would be nicely paired with Night Force. He's like Night Force before there was Night Force. I guess my only complaint would be I wish he were used more in the comic book, but even that's not a major complaint because the few times he did appear in the comic book, I liked the way he was used. So why was Hasbro reluctant to call Lolite a sniper? Maybe it's because a sniper doesn't fit with our traditional ideas of heroism. A sniper doesn't face his enemy mano a mano in fisticuffs. A sniper takes out his enemy from a distance, from concealment. His enemy doesn't even see him, and that doesn't sound like a fair fight. But warfare is not a fair fight. It's not a boxing match, and Lolai would have an important role on the team. He could eliminate threats before they could harm his teammates, and he could provide valuable field intelligence. But if Hasbro had any qualms about calling Lolite a sniper, the kids didn't seem to have any trouble with it. I remember Lolite being pretty popular, and with an action figure this nice, it's easy to see why. That was my review of the 1986 Lolite. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe on YouTube, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Check back next week, and remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Two of them on top of the Great Wall of Hieroglyphs, and one in the niche below the ceremonial stairs. Who's there? <laughs> What's all this? So glad you could join us. Oh, Drop in anytime, Zartan. They've got us boxed in. Torch, turn up the heat. <laughs> Nothing like a cherry blaze to warm a dreadnoughts on, eh? <laughs> Things are getting a mite warm, Flint. Looks like it's time for a little swim. That water's much too chilly for our...